Hi, welcome to Physical Science Chemistry Unit 2. This is Level 3 on Drawing Models. This is the abbreviated ECBLD. You will definitely need your formula sheet and your periodic table for this one. So first, let's review Level 1 and 2. If you're given this problem, it's in ion notation, and you have to find NPNEIAIS. So its name is zinc. There are 30 protons, there are 36 neutrons, and there are 27 electrons. This is an ion because it has a charge. The AAM of zinc is 65.39 or 65. So therefore this is an isotope, it is not stable. First thing on your periodic table, you're going to want to add the group numbers and the valence. So the group numbers, um, add the group numbers to your periodic table. This is literally numbering the columns 1 through 18 uh, across the top from left to right. Do that now. Now you're going to add the valence numbers to your periodic table. These are going to go above the group number and you're going to circle these numbers. So group 1 has a valence of 1, group 2 has a valence of 2, group 3, 3 through 12 have a variable valence and literally write the words variable valence. Group 13 has 3, 14 is 4, and so on. So that your periodic table ends up looking something like that. With the group number written first, the valence written above it, and circled. So EC stands for the electron configuration. It's based on the number of electrons. And you have a diagram on the back of your periodic table that will help with this. The B stands for the Bohr model, and it's a circular diagram of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And again, you have a sample diagram on the back of your periodic table. Then you have a loop diagram. This is based on the total number of subatomic particles in location. And finally, we have a dot diagram. This is based strictly on the periodic table. So electron configuration is the placement of electrons in shells and subshells or orbits around the nucleus. And each shell contains a different number of electrons. This table may be helpful because shell 1 has an S sublevel, which is a total of 2. Shell 2 has the sublevels S and P, or sections S and P, and they have a total of 8. On the back of your periodic table, next to the electron configuration map, you are going to want to write these totals, S equals 2, P equals 6, D equals 10, and F equals 14. In order to do the electron configuration, step one is to find the number of electrons in level one. Then you begin to place the electrons into shells and subshells following the chart. I'll also show you how to get the electron configuration itself by using the periodic table. And then your record is the number of electrons placed and where in the format of shell, sublevel, and number. So for example, a 1s2 means that you are on shell 1 in sublevel s, there are two electrons there. The Bohr model looks like this, and the protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus, and we'll put numbers there instead of p's and n's. We'll put a P is this number and N is this number. Then the electrons are positioned in shells around the nucleus. So each shell is filled in based on the electron configuration. So when we said we had 1s2, that meant 
two electrons on shell one, two electrons on shell two, and so forth. The loop diagram looks kind of like a modified sound wave. It's a shorter way of drawing the model of an atom. You get protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and then the total number of electrons per shell, as if they were all squished in there together. To do the loop diagram, you place the protons and neutrons from level one in the nucleus, and again, we'll have P and a number and N and a number. And then you put the total number of electrons on each shell at the bottom of its corresponding loop. So the loops are numbered from left to right from the nucleus. Finally, we have a dot diagram. And a dot diagram is a short way of writing the symbol with its valence electrons. The valence electrons are, remember, associated with the group. You numbered 1 through 18. Those are your group numbers, right? And you put the valence above them. Let's look at an example that we did before. So level one was zinc, 30 protons, 36 neutrons, 27 electrons. It was an ion. The AAM was 65.39. It was an isotope, and it is not stable. So level three starts with the electron configuration. So you're going to want that electron configuration chart on the back of your periodic table. And we're going to do the electron con um, configuration math. So we start with the number of electrons, 27 electrons. Then you go to the first location. We read from left to right, so we start with 1s. In 1s, two electrons get to sit down. Now we have 25. Then following the arrows, we go to 2s. 2s, two more can sit down. Now we have 23. Following to 2 P, six can sit down in the P section. Think of it as a table for six at a restaurant. Six people sit down, now we have 17. We go to 3S, two people sit down, now we have 15. We go to 3P, six people sit down, now we have nine. We go to 4S, two people sit down, now we have seven. And we go to 3D, and those seven can sit there, because remember, the D section can hold 10. Now, the electron configuration is not that. That's the electron configuration math. The electron configuration is actually hidden inside that. And it is the level, the shell, the sublevel, and then how many people or electrons are there. So the actual electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d7. The Bohr model would start out looking like this, and you would put your protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Then you would fill those electron bubbles, if you will, for, or put X's on circles or in between circles or whatever works for you. And 1S would get 2, 2S would get 2, 2P would get 6, 3S would get 2, 3P would get 6, 4S would get 2, and 3D would get 7. The loop diagram, you would start with what looked like a sound wave and put protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and then the total number of electrons per shell. So shell 1 has 2, 2 has 8, 3 has 15, because remember on shell 3 you had 2, 6, and 7. That makes 15. And then shell 4 had 2. Finally, we have the dot diagram, and there is no dot diagram because zinc is in that little valley box that has no set valence. You're going to be doing these in class. Thanks for watching.